Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. I mean, Jack, God, welcome back to my channel. We've got a Dell laptop here. It's been given to me, and I basically said, Come on, Jack, I've got this laptop. Um, recently, it's got really sluggish and slow. Can you help me out? And I've, um, it's a couple of years old, probably about maybe three years old. And it's a Dell Inspiron M5030. And um, it usually comes with Windows 7. I actually remember um, sorting this out for him for a little while back. And it was um, Windows 7 on here. When I booted it up, I actually found Windows 10. So it's obviously gone through that where Microsoft released, did a release of Windows 10 and forced it on people. And so it looks like it's actually downloaded and installed. And it's now super sluggishly slow. Uh, all it's done is upgraded from 7 to 10 and he doesn't have anything on it. There's no, there's no Microsoft Office on here. It's just purely Windows and he uses Terminal Server to get to his desktop for work. So this is purely just runs Windows and it's just super slow. I've booted up his crap. So what I'm going to do today for him is we're going to wipe this down and we're going to actually fit uh, an SSD drive instead of his standard uh, uh, CETA drive in here. I think it's got like 500 meg gigabyte. Again, he doesn't use it for storing music or anything like that. It's just literally a desktop connects to a terminal server, um, so it's remote, it connects remotely. So nothing is really s stored on here. It's just a way of. It's like a dumb, dumb laptop, you know, it, or a dumb terminal, I suppose you call it. So I find recently with laptops, if they're running a bit slow and stuff, and you're just running Windows on it. You can invest into these SSD drives, which really brings them back to life, especially old ones that are running really super sluggishly slow. Uh, these have like a 500 megabyte read speed and a write speed the same. Be careful when you buy an SSD discs, because the, the smaller they are, the cheaper they are. But obviously, 120, 120 gig running Windows 10 minimal is, that is minimal to have installed. If you're going to be storing files and music and videos and stuff, then you need at least to look to spend at least a, um, a good um, uh, one terabyte SSD drive to be installed, which is going to give you a reasonable disk space, and then at least have an external drive for carrying bigger large files on. Uh, but unfortunately, one terabyte SSD drive can be quite expensive. But I do like the SSD drives; they really do bring old laptop back to life for a little bit longer. So if you can't afford to upgrade to a new laptop, at least you can sort of upgrade the SSD drive. In, in here as well. So this should actually make it much, much faster. Uh, and I know that for a fact because I did a laptop for my daughter uh, a few weeks ago and hers was running slow. So we took a 500 gig drive out. We installed one of these in it running Windows and damn, as soon as you powers it on, literally seconds later Windows was loaded. So it really makes a big difference. So that's what we're gonna do today. So this is the Dell. So I'm gonna show you how to undo this they'll strip it down to get to the laptop it's not a sort of thing you can just undo a few screws and the hard drives accessible this is going to take the whole lot off so I'm going to show you how you can do this so let's get on with uh, installing the SSD drive right we need to undo one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I think it's about ten screws so remove the battery first so we unlock the battery Screws. So yeah, so we got start this side. So there's um, a couple of lugs behind the and just need to push them back. And the keyboard should then just suddenly rise up, like so. And then it unhooks up the bottom. Then carefully remove the keyboard from its little plaque thing. There's a little lip on, I don't know if you can see this, there's a little lip on the, key, the keyboard and then it releases the keyboard so you have to lift it up a little bit and uh, it comes up and now you can access the RAM inside the machine here this has got um, two sims in there so I think this has got like four or eight gigs so I could do a, um, a hard memory upgrade but obviously I've got no memory at the moment here 
to upgrade it with, but you could, we could do it while it's off. But anyway, so that's off, then we should then be able to release the bottom. Carefully pulling up, you don't want to bust it and break break the clips because otherwise it won't go back down. So when you lift it, I'll be careful because you've got some cables here um, that's holding things in. You've got a ribbon cable this side here. You've got one cable this side here. You should just pull up off the board. And I've got another ribbon cable there. So that's the sensors here, or the um, couple of sensor bits here. And you've got the um, power button that side. You've got this middle control panel, which is the touch sensitive bit. So that's ribbon cable here. And then you've got these back, what are the back ones for? Oh, they're the speakers, so they're the speakers. So, but when you lay it back on top, um, you find the cables should point to the right holes and you can't go wrong putting it back in, in place anyway. So that's the key, uh, top keyboard off. So underneath now we can actually see we've got the memory slots showing, showing it's now. You can see there's a Wi-Fi module here. CPU and, and its um, fan bit. So while you have this off, have a check for the fan to see if there's any dust or bits built up in there for not clean it off because um, it's very good for sucking in dust. And after quite a bit of time, it looks like a bit of carpet sort of across here. You can put it across and put it off then, but it looks all nice and clear. The fan spins nice and freely, it looks good. So this is the bit we want to get the hard drive from here. So this should now just pull to one side releases the hard drive nicely like so. So this one we're, we're taking out is a 250 gig hard drive, so it's a very small hard drive anyway. As I said, he doesn't actually use it for anything apart from um, using it as a dumb terminal. So take the SSD drive here. This should just literally slide back into place. Because um, there's a bit of um, gap between that, some of these come with um, uh, adapters that you, you glue on the bottom here to give it the extra thickness of what a standard hard drive would be on this one here. But in this case, I haven't got anything underneath. So I'm hoping it'll just stay in, in place anyway. And also the, it's the same size as the hard drive as you can see anyway. So it should just stay in place anyway. Um, so that means it's got no moving parts, so it should be a lot faster for this laptop. So now we just put the, um, put this all back. So put it back in the same way we, we took it up. So check all the little ribbon cables. So we've got a ribbon cable here, one here, and a little connector. So these got little plastic bits on, you should just be able to push that back into play, I think. A uh, flat screwdriver, no, that you have to pull up these little um, plastic bits the lift up and then you put the ribbon cable down slides in nice and nice and easy once it's in then you push the black little lug bits down it should lock the cable into place like so we've got one here as well oh, very fiddly so be very careful not quite sure what things look like once you take the keyboard off take a picture of it and that's, that's what I sometimes do when I've got something new that I've not sort of um, played around before. Take a nice picture of it, and then, then so you can see all the components here. So when you do put the lid back on, you think, where does things go? You can then take a look, look at the picture, compare it, and then, then you'll see what you're, what you're missing. With the ribbon cables, don't rush, because you can easily break those. If you break those, then they can be very hard to source and buy new to replace with. And so the last thing you want to do is break something, especially with this tiny little cable, and then just sort it in place. There you go. So that's all in. So you've got one, two, three. So touch sensitive, power button, and speakers are all back on. So we then push the case down so it click into place. Oh. Like so. Okay, we can check around the side to make sure it's all flush. That's all flush, flush at the top. That looks good. Now we fit the keyboard back into play. So again, um, there's the ribbon cable here. And again, you've got a little flap down here. Um, there's a little flap here. 
that once once the cable goes into place, you push the flap over it, and it sort of um, grips it. So, and it's fiddly as well. It gives you a bit of a sort of thing, but still fiddly getting the um, keyboard in and lines up as well. So, again, take your time getting it in. Don't rush it. So I'm not going to put all the screws back until I actually power this up to make sure it can see the hard drive. I can start and install Windows on it. Otherwise, if the keyboard's not into place, I can then flip it back up and just check it as well, make sure it's all gone in, because I'm not sure with that ribbon cable where it's actually gone in nice and tight. So um, that's it. So that's quite straightforward. Replacing the hard drive. As you can see now, we've got the SSD drive installed and it's running really nice and smooth now. Uh, it wouldn't accept Windows 10 because this um, has not been tested on Windows 10, so I've got through halfway through the install on this Dell itself. And Dell's website does say it's not been tested on the upgrade before, so it's not actually working properly. It gets halfway through the install and Windows 10 just goes blank screen, that's it. So I revert back to window installing Windows 7 on this. So yeah, just up there, up, updating all the updates. I'll just load Chrome on here. Uh, Google Chrome and some various other bits and pieces. I'll make sure that the Wi-Fi drive is installed and it's good to go. So that was quite successful installing a nice fast SSD drive. There we go. Any questions you've got on this, please comment below. Uh, remember to hit that subscribe button and remember a thumbs up and uh, see you soon. Cheers.